Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School for the final regular season game of the 2018 Legion season. Today, it is Ashland Post 77 taking on Sudbury Post 191. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the broadcast. Connor Donovan is our cameraman on this beautiful 80 degree clear day. Let's get right into it with the Sudbury lineup as stepping in first to face pitcher Matt Tomaselli is the second baseman Ben Coleman, the shortstop Keith Schmelter batting second, Jack McKee and the catcher batting third, Will Fletcher the right fielder hitting cleanup, Henry Stahl the pitcher hitting fifth, Ken Sullivan the center fielder hitting sixth, Charlie Desmaris, the left fielder, batting seventh. Kyle Hankey, the first baseman, hitting eighth. And Jacob Noyes, the third baseman, hitting ninth for Sudbury. Post 191, who comes into today's matchup in last place in zone five with a record of three wins and 13 losses. Right back up the middle, as this is gloved by Hornung. Throw to first, no problem. One pitch, one out, six to three on out number one. Let's take a look at the post 77 defense. Larry Sacklad has Ashland's field for us. It's a delightful evening tonight. Nary a cloud in the sky. Lewis Rossi at uh, third base. Jackson Horning at shortstop. Colt Glassburn at second. Zach Pesson at first base. Thomas Ellie pitches. There's a ball low. Left field Dominic Cavanaugh. Center field Brad Seymour. Right field Ben Thomas. Sean Jewett catching Matt. Tomaselli. Matt Tomaselli making his first start of the Legion season. As this is hit high in the air, the second baseman's going to get under it and make the catch. Nicely done by Cole Glassburn, two away. What's Jackson Hornin doing all the way over there? That's what I want to know. Oh, backing him up. <laughs> Jack McKee and the catcher will step in. It's Matt Tomaselli. So far has pitched an inning and two thirds. Not much experience on the mound, but certainly gonna get a good amount of experience in this game. That pitch inside, one and oh to Jack McKeon. And I don't think there's a better team to get that experience against Sudbury. They've struggled this season on really both sides of the ball. Very young team. Why, so, why are you so politically correct? Well, That's you know. what I wanna know. <laughs> They're horrendous. They got spanked 14 to 1 the last time they played. <laughs> there's, Ashland. there's the brutally honest Larry Sacklad. Two and one count on Jack McKeon. But Sudbury has been one of the elite programs throughout the last few years in zone five. This is certainly a down year for them, but you know, just about three years ago, post 77 was kind of in Sudbury's shoes. So I'd expect Sudbury to work their way back up. Yeah, Newton, the next couple Newton of seasons. too. Newton right. too has uh, lost its fortune. Yeah, it happens. You know, Sudbury lost a lot of talent from last year's roster. Wind up and the pitch, and I think he was trying to check his swing, but he ended up hitting the ball. Pesson picks it up, tags the first base bag. One, two, three, they go in the top of the first to the bottom of the first. We go. It's Ashland the Legion baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network, consisting of HCAT in Holliston, WACA-TV in Ashland, and HCAM in Hopkinton. Bottom of the first inning, post 77 coming up to the plate. Let's take a look at the Ashland batting order. Leading things off, the right fielder Ben Thomas batting second, the DH Ronan Bates batting third, the shortstop Jackson Hornung. Hitting cleanup and playing left field, Dom Cavanaugh. Batting fifth, third baseman, Louis Rossi. Batting sixth, catcher, Sean Jewett. Batting seventh, center fielder, Brad Seymour. Batting eighth, first baseman, Zach Pesson. And second baseman, Cole Glassburn. Hitting ninth for Ashland, post 77, who has officially clinched the two spot as they are 13 and four on the season. And they also do technically have a shot at the one spot, depending on what happens to Lowell in the next couple days. But post 77, for sure, will have a bye in the first round of the playoffs. With the Sudbury post 191 defense, here is Larry Sacklad. Playing third base, Jacob Noyes. Shortstop, Kevin Schmelter. Ken Bateman at second base. Kyle Hankey at first base. Charlie Desmaris playing left field. Ken Sullivan in center, Will Fletcher in right, 
Jack McKeon behind the plate, catching Henry Stuhl. Henry Stuhl, the starting pitcher for Sudbury today as Ben Thomas just about set to step in. We'll get you the District 5 standings as we near the end of the regular season. This is the very last game of the regular season for post 77. And right now you got Lowell in first, 13 wins, one loss. Ashland in second, 13 wins, four losses. And they have secured at least the second spot. Medford in third, 10 and seven. Natick in fourth at 11 and six. Actually Natick is now above Medford as uh, Natick picked up a game over Medford. Hudson is seven and nine in fifth. Waltham is six and nine. Bill Rick a five and eight wind up in the pitch. And that one is outside. North Chelmsford, 5 and 12. Newton, 5 and 9. And Sudbury, post 191. Three wins, 13 losses. 2 and 0 on Ben Thomas. What stool was the RA? Not quite sure about that one. Now, post 77, they played yesterday on the road in North Chelmsford. And this game would mean a whole lot more if they didn't win yesterday. They ended up defeating North Chelmsford by a final score of eight to seven. Ashland plated uh, six runs in the top of the seventh to overcome a seven to two deficit at the time and take the game eight to seven. If they did not win that game last night, today's game would mean a whole lot as they would still be trying to clinch that two spot. Full count on Ben Thomas. But since they did clinch the two spot, they secured the first round by. But they could still technically grab the one spot, but they're gonna try to win this one anyway. As Ben Thomas grabs the walk, Ronan Bates will step in. Coach Johnson's got his regular lineup out there. He's not uh, taking anything for granted. Wants to put Sudbury away, give oh. him a chance to get their last uh, game in before playoffs begin. Well, somehow Lowell drops a couple. Could be talking about the first spot here. Hit to second, throw to second for one, throw to first, not in time. So Ronan Bates reaches on the four to six force out. One away, Jackson Horning, the shortstop, will step in. And of course, the way the playoffs work, it's District 5 mixed with District 8 in the first step of the playoffs. Top two teams in each district get a bye round in the first round, which is a single elimination round. As this is hit up the middle right to the shortstop, throw to first, and they double him up. Nicely done by the Sudbury defense. And that will wrap up the first inning. We are scoreless heading to the second on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the second inning due up for Sudbury, four, five, and six. Will Fletcher, the right fielder, Henry Stahl, the pitcher, and Ken Sullivan, the center fielder. Face Matt Tomaselli, who pitched a one, two, three first inning, making his Starting debut for post 77 today. And he's been uh, pretty reliable at times in relief for post 77. And if they could establish him as another starter, that just gives them all the more pitching heading into the postseason. Because they already have four or five reliable starters now. Coach Johnson has the uh, luxury of yanking somebody if they're not getting the job done. There's a pop-up foul. And he's not going to lose anything by going to the next guy. That's right. Because they are certainly going to get a few days off anyway. They'll have at least four days off, I believe. They could go Tampa Bay Rays style. Just bring out a new pitcher every inning. That's true. There's the 1-1. One, one. And this is hit in the, in the right field. And that'll get down for a single. Liner in the right field for Will Fletcher. Now Henry Stahl, the pitcher, will step in. 
Sudbury was just able to field nine players. Last player showed up about 10 minutes before game time. Well, in game one, they brought 13 players down. Well, maybe four on vacation or something like that. Pitch up high, 1-0. and Tomaselli looks at first, set to deliver from the stretch. Fouled away, one and one. Stuhl presents himself as a really good hitter. Big, tall, lanky. Looks at first and deals. That's fouled away, one and two. Getting a look at the future of post-77 pitching perhaps today. Well, what if Sudbury's going to test Tomaselli's move? They don't have a book on him. Looks at first and deals upstairs. Two and two. Nice crowd tonight, Tom. Very nice crowd. Yeah, not too bad. Pretty good turnout. Beautiful day to watch a baseball game. Full count now. It's July 19th, I think, or the 20th. We haven't hit the dog days yet. Set to deliver. And this is hit in the air. Could be trouble over to right center. That's going to get down for a hit. Will Fletcher coming around second. He'll head over to third, and he'll stop there. It is a double for Henry Stahl, the pitcher. Two runners in scoring position, no outs. Ken Sullivan, the center fielder, to step in. Sudbury coach is offering up some advice to uh, his runner, telling him the ball was in front of him. You should have been around third and hitting home. Brad Simo was having a little trouble picking up that ball up near the fence in center field. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike to Ken Sullivan. Tomaselli working from the stretch. Infield in. Another strike, 0 and 2. I think that's the best thing Matt Tomaselli could do is this defense behind him just throw strikes. Three strikes and the batter is out. <laughs> Good point, Larry. Swing and a miss. And he's going to trot down to first to throw over. No problem. Nice job by Jewett looking over at third before he threw to first to warn that runner. You better stay there. One away with two on. Charlie Desmaris, the left fielder, to step in. Sean Jewett has improved his game especially defensively. That's not an easy play. It's going to look the runner back to third, make the throw to first. Certainly isn't. If anybody could do it, though, it is post-77's Sean Jewett. Still some sunlight left out in center field and right field. Tomaselli looks at third and deals. There's a strike, one and one. Looks a little low to me. Oh, one, two, excuse me. Just low, one and two. Post 77's bench is a little looser than they normally are. Already locking up a playoff spot. And this is up the middle past the second baseman. One run is in. 
The runner behind him gonna be stopped at third. It's a one nothing Sudbury lead. An RBI single for Charlie Desmaris. Will Fletcher comes around to score. That'll bring up Kyle Hankey, the first baseman. I can't read the number. Who's on third base? Number 15, the pitcher, Henry Stell. <laughs> Runners on first and third. A pitch low to Hankey, 1-0. Tomaselli looks at first and is set to deliver. Fouled away. One and one. Nice job by Ben Thomas, not allowing that second runner to score. Subbury had their runner going. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to center field. That'll get down for a hit. It's 2-0. Sudbury leading. An RBI single for Kyle Hankey. Well, puts runners on first and second. Jacob Noyes, the third baseman, will step in. I wonder what the leash will be with Thomas Sally. I'm sure they'd love to at least get him through the second inning, but I have a hard time believing they're going to leave him out there just to get shelled. There's a strike. It's a force at third base, force at second. One and one. I'm going to guess Johnson will give him a five red limit. And this is up the middle, takes a couple hops on the infield grass. Glove by Glassburn, flip to second for one, out of the first. And not in time, they do get one out. A four to six out as noise reaches. This Morris up to third. So runners on the corners, two outs. Ben Coleman, the second baseman, to step in. Runner taking off, throw up by Jewett. In time, easily caught stealing for the third out. But Sudbury does play two runs, and it's a 2 nothing post-191 lead as we head to the bottom of the second on HKM and WACA-TV. Bottom of the second inning, 4-5 and 6, due up for post-77. Tom Cavanaugh, Lewis Rossi, and Sean Jewett stepping in. Face Henry Stahl, a 2-0 lead for Sudbury. Wind up and the pitch, and that's fouled away, 0-1. Cavanaugh has had a great year at the plate. Nice, nice year on the mound. The pitch just outside. One and one. Now, if the pitch previous to that was called a ball and that was called a strike, I can understand the fans being upset. Two and two. <laughs> Coach Jake Obit barking out the commands. Fouled away. Wind 
up and the pitch. Drives this one over to right field, but there to make the catch is Will Fletcher. Miss Rossi, the third baseman, will step in. Yeah, Stahl is 6'4". Uh, Tall gent. 6'4 and lanky at 170. Outside, 1-0. Certainly dealing today. Well, Chris Sale's about 6'6", 170, right? Yep. Two and oh. Three and oh. Strike one, three and one on Rossi. Sean Jewett on deck. As you know, Louis Rossi is a threat to bunt. He'll drive this one up the middle and it's gonna get by the second baseman. A one out single for Rossi. First hit of the ball game, four post 77 and now Sean Jewett, the catcher, will step in. Pitch inside, 1-0. and oh. Rossi very aggressive on the bases as he is at the plate. Fouled away. Here's the 1-1, one, one. and this is up the middle, gloved by the shortstop. He'll step on second for one, throw to first, no problem. Six to three, double play, that'll retire the side. In the second inning, we will head to the top of the third. It's a two nothing Sudbury lead on HKM and WACA TV. Top of the third inning, top of the order. For Sudbury post 191, Ben Coleman, Keith Schmelter, and Jack McKeon. Face man Tomaselli. 2 0 lead for Sudbury, but as we mentioned, this game does not mean too much for post 77. They are locked into that two spot. And they are going to have a bye in the first round of the playoffs. So they are certainly looking forward towards that. As Coleman steps in. Two runs on four hits so far for Sudbury, but this is Tomaselli's first opportunity to get a start. And this is great experience. Get out there and see what it feels like to get that start. I agree, experience does matter. It's like chopping down a tree. If you never chop one down, your first one is very important. Yep. That's a bad analogy, isn't it? Yeah, it works. I guess it works. Sudbury coach was upset at his base runner who took off from first to second, got thrown out by a mile. This is driven over to center field, but there to make the catch, Brad Seymour. One away. Keith Schmelter, the shortstop, will step in. Well, it's been a great couple weeks for post 77. No days off. They really have it. They they had last Saturday off. They played Sunday and Monday, and they had Tuesday off. So they have had two days off in the past 11 days. A lot of baseball. They fared fairly well. And this is up the left side, past the reach of Hornung, a one-out single for Schmelter. 
Jack McKee and the catcher will step in. Good turnout from Sudbury here today. It's a nice easy trip over. The back roads. They could take their horse and buggy all the way. As they did in the olden days. That one down low, 1-0. Well, post 77 does not score any runs. It doesn't matter what Thomas Ellie does on the mound. Runner taking off from first. The throw up is in time. Second attempted base stealer gunned down by Sean Jewett. Smelter caught stealing, and there's two away. Go ahead, keep testing him. He loves it. With the lead, I'm sort of wondering why they would run themselves into an out. Since they saw Sean Jewett throw the previous runner out to get in the inning last, there's a strike. It's a pace of game play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Obviously, Sudbury eliminated from playoff contention. Ashland is going to be either the one spot or the two spot, so... Not much to play for, so maybe some extra risk taking here. How about playing for the one spot? Put some pressure on Lowell. That's what I would do. Filed away, two and two. So if you get a win, you got more wins than Lowell. That makes them at least have to win one more. Which you figure they probably would, but you never know. And Lowell does have the tiebreaker. It is a run differential. Uh, for the tiebreaker. They split the season series, but Lowell defeated Ashland by four. Ashland won their game by two. So that gives Lowell the tiebreaker. This might be the biggest crowd of the year, Tom. Yeah. No humidity, no mosquitoes. Definitely the best weather of the year. Although we've had some great weather for the most part, but today is very nice. Up the left side, and Hornung's not going to be able to make a play on it. Two out single for McKeon. That'll bring up Will Fletcher, the right fielder. He had absolutely no chance on that play. No, that would have been a miracle if he came up with that. That is definitely a base hit, not an error in my book. He could have let that ball go, and Brad Seymour would have picked it up. If he didn't catch that runner stealing, it would be one out with two on right now. Or actually, maybe not, because he might have been able to get the runner at second. Swing and a miss. A little tip. 0 and 1. Big cut. Healthy cut. Will Fletcher singled last inning and scored a run. And this is up the middle. Slow roller past the dive of Cole Glassburn. It'll be first and second with two outs. Another good effort by Cole Glassburn. Dangerous hitter coming to the plate now, though. Henry Stahl, who doubled last inning and scored a run stepping in. Middle of the order for Sudbury. Sudbury has figured out Stahl. Doesn't seem to have a breaking pitch developed yet. Gets a piece of this one over to center and caught by Brad Seymour. That'll be the third out of the top of the third to the bottom of the inning we go. 2 nothing Sudbury on WAZA TV and HCAM. Bottom of the third inning, 7, 8, and 9 coming up to the plate. Brad Seymour to step in to face Henry Stahl. Pretty good pitching performance so far by Stahl. He's given up no runs, one hit. Line up and the pitch. This is up the middle past the reach of the pitcher. Picked up by the shortstop throw to first. Pulls the first baseman off the bag. And Seymour is safe on the errant throw. First error of the game for Sudbury. And that'll bring up Zach Pesson. Zach Pesson's been hitting the ball very well of late. Coach Johnson deciding to stack some good average hitters at the back end of his lineup. 
Cole Glassburn waiting on deck. And this is up the left side, gloved by the third baseman, throw to second for one, throw to first, not in time. So Zach Peston reaches on the five to four force out. And that'll bring up Cole Glasper in the second baseman. Nice job by Noyes at third base, was not the least bit intimidated by the haunted infield. Stall from the stretch, upstairs, 1-0. Cole Glassburn was a little upset last night. Somebody used his bat. And this is hit foul just over us. And fortunately, Connor didn't have to pull out his glove and make the catch. Well, one the, one. the boys were giving Cole the, the business during batting practice today. They were all taking swings with his bat. Oh, boy. Some... Uh, some players are very particular about their uh, equipment. Two and well, that's one. That's why they went out there swinging his bat. <laughs> it's kind of a rookie on this team, so. Gets a piece of this one over to left field, and it is caught by Desmaris two-way. Desmaris making it a little adventure out there. I'll bring up Ben Thomas, the right fielder. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. Oh, and one on Thomas. Well, let's see the second time around whether post 77 can figure out Stoll. Upstairs. Nice. Called strike, one and two. Looks at first and deals. There's strike three, and that'll be out number three. In the bottom of the third, to the top of the fourth we go. Two nothing Sudbury on WACA and HCAM. Top of the fourth inning, two up for Sudbury. Six, seven, and eight, Ken Sullivan, Charlie Desmars, Kyle Hankey. And Tomaselli continuing on in his first start of the season for post 77. So far, not too bad. He's given up two runs and seven hits. Some great defensive work, though, by post 77, as that's fouled away 0 and 1. Tomaselli's been a good soldier this year, hasn't seen much action, but it's getting the start today. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Well, Sudbury coach didn't like that swing. Yeah, I think he tried to hold up, but just couldn't. Be sure to stay tuned to hcam.tv, as well as our social media pages, or my social media page on Twitter, at the real Tom Nappy, to find out where Post 77 will be as the playoffs are. Coming up next for post 77. And they have one of the top two spots in zone five. Nice buy round to start things off. And then they'll start in the second round where it's two loss elimination from there, then on out as there's a swing and a miss. One nice away. smile on Thomas Sully's face. One away and that was his uh, second strikeout of the day. Charlie Desmaris will step in. I 
think the goal of this game for Coach Johnson is just manage your pitching. Make sure you don't have to dig into your rotation at all. And so far, Tomaselli making, getting some uh, good work out there and we'll give up a single there. He's gotten out of a few jams today. Let's see if he can get out of this one. One out single and that'll bring up Kyle Hankey, the first baseman. None of Sudbury's hits have been cheap. They barreled Tomaselli up pretty good so far. Eight hits for Sudbury. He's been living dangerously out on the mound. Fouls that one off. Oh and one on Hanky. Oh, we've got the golden retriever back to go shagging balls. Nice to see him again. That one low, one and one. Big lead at first for Desmaris. Sean Jewett has already thrown two runners out trying to steal. Tomaselli looks at first and deals. Cool. Fouled away, one and two. The dog getting a big round of applause for fetching that ball up in the woods. Tomaselli looks at first and is set to deal. Down low, two and two. And this is up the middle and just out of the glove of Glasper and everybody's gonna be safe. Lead runner heading to third and he will be safe. It's gonna be runners on second and third with one out. I don't know if you'd give that an error or not. No. I'd say no. But the So it's a single for Hanky, advances a second on the throw over. That'll bring up Jacob Noyes, two runners in scoring position, one out. The hitter should be on second base if he read that play. Oh no, he actually stayed at first, excuse me. And that ball was way overthrown on a cutoff man, so he should be standing on second base. But so it's runners on the corners with one out. Sudbury's got a very young team, so his coach has got his work cut out for him next year. Tomaselli looks at first and is set to deal. Just low, 1-0. I think this young man is a 2021 graduate. Seems way off in the distance. Tomaselli deals. Down low, 2-0. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away, two and one. Thomas Sully looks at first. Now peek over at third and deals. That's low, gets by Jouette, and now the runner gonna try to come home. The throw to the pitcher is going to get away, and it's a three-nothing game. As Mars comes home on the, what are you calling that, a well pitch? WP, WP. I agree. Hanky advances to second. 3-0 lead for Sudbury. Tomaselli working from the stretch. Set to deliver. 
And we'll put that up the middle, and it is gloved by the shortstop. Throw to first, no problem. Six to three for the out, two away. Hankey pushes up to third. That'll bring up Ben Coleman. Coleman's 0 for 2 so far today. Swing and a miss. Mighty cut. And this is hit high in the air over to right field. Now in foul territory. And Ben Thomas able to chase it down to make the catch for the third and final out of the top of the fourth. A 3-0 Sudbury lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth on HCAM and WACA-TV. <laughs> bottom of the fourth inning, 2-3 and 4 due up for post-77. Ronan Bates, Jackson Horning, Dom Cavanaugh to face Henry Stahl, who is pitching a gem so far today. He's giving up no runs, one hit, and he has struck out one. But his defense has done a nice job behind him. As Bates steps in, we'll go through the standings once again in zone five. As this is up the middle, past the reach of everybody, a leadoff single for Bates, who's been hitting the ball very nicely lately. That'll bring up Jackson Horning, the shortstop. Taking you through the zone five standings, Lowell in first, 13 wins, one loss. One more win will secure first place for Lowell. They still have four more games left to play. They're playing right now. They play two more tomorrow, and they play one on Sunday. And then Ashland is 13-4. and four. They will definitely have the second place spot. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. So they have clinched a bye round. And then you got Natick in third, 11 and six. They pulled off a big win the other day and Medford lost, fell to 10 and seven. They're, they are fighting for three and four, but they have both clinched playoff spots as well. And I'm not sure what this is about here. Are they gonna have a pinch runner, it looks like. You know, I noticed something, Tom. We've been down here for a couple of years now. Right behind us, there is a scoreboard. I'd never noticed that before. They never use it. Oh. Not quite. So I guess they're going to have a pinch runner. Maybe we got a hammy or a groin pull situation. So Bates comes out of the game. So Rankatori put in? Well, that's yeah, Drew Rankatori pinch running. Yeah. Well, Ronan Bates was a DH, so. Well, you hope he's okay. Maybe Tim they're just swapping him out. Continuing on with the Zone 5 standings though, all the, all the teams I'm about to mention are eliminated from playoff contention. We'll get you those in just a moment. And there's another strike to Hornung, 0-2. Hudson 7-9, Waltham 6-9, Bill Ricca 5-8, North Chelmsford 5-12, Newton 5-9, and, and Sudbury 3-13. And What's the consolation prize for those teams well, they, this They'll year. actually play in a Zone 5 tournament for the eliminated teams. We'll have a little tournament, so. And everybody's gonna be safe. Uh, Jacob Noyes could not get the throw away. So, Horning reaches on the error. It's two on, no outs for post 77. Tying run coming to the plate, Tom Cavanaugh. That was a slowly hit ball, Tom, and Jackson would have probably beaten that one out anyway. Henry Stahl from the stretch. There's a strike. Oh, and one on Dom Cavanaugh. Drew Rankatori getting a medium length lead at second base. Nobody's holding him on. 
And this is up the left side, and that's going to get through for a base hit. And the lead runner going to be waved around. Here comes Ranka Torrey. It's a 3-1 game. And now the throw to second is going to get away. And advancing over to third is going to be Hornung. Yep. So that'll put Kavanaugh at first, Hornung at third. An RBI single for Dom Kavanaugh. Still no outs in the inning. Runners on the corners. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, to step in. First time they had it out with uh, Subray, they ran on the catcher quite a bit. Well, Matt Tomaselli making his first start of the year on the mound for post 77. Needed some run support, and they're hoping to get him some right here. Runner taking off from first. The throw up is in time. Good throw by McKee, and they catch Dom Cavanaugh stealing. Make a liar out of me. One away. And this is hit in the air, foul out of play. No and one. Jackson Horning at third, Dom Cavanaugh caught stealing. A run in for post 77. It's a 3-1 Sudbury lead here in the bottom of the fourth. As this is hit in the air over to center field, and that's going to drop four base hit. Here comes Jackson Horning around to score. It's 3-2. An RBI single for Lewis Rossi. That'll bring up Sean Jewett, the catcher. I don't know whether the center fielder just misplayed that or the moon got in the way or something there. <laughs> Not the, sure. The gravitational pull of the moon <laughs> affected the center fielder. Got a feeling they may send Lou Rossi. Uh... I don't know why you steal here. I mean, had no outs, couple runners on. Even though this game might not mean much, why not try to win it? Because that's fouled away. Or no, excuse me, that's hit over to center field and caught. And that is the second out. Keep going, Henry, keep going. That'll bring up Brad Seymour. You know, once the sun goes away, it gets a little more difficult to be at uh, ground level. Hardly any sun left on the field. Right. A little bit out in right field. Fans trying to get their last bit of sun for the day out in right field area. There's a strike. Runner on first, two outs, two in, a three to two Sudbury lead. Checking at first, runner back safe. It looked almost uh, close to a balk. He didn't look like he disengaged his back leg from the rubber. Outside. And this is hit in the air over to left field. That'll get down for a base hit. Lewis Rossi will stop at second. Two out single for Seymour. That'll bring up Zach Pesson. Tying run at second base. Wind up in the pitch. Here's a strike. Oh, and one. Stall set to deliver. Inside, one and one. Zach Pesson has hit the ball well as of late. Strike, one and two. Zach 
Pesson had an RBI single in the victory against Medford on Monday. Came in the sixth inning. And gets a piece of this one, and that is going to give the center fielder some trouble. That'll get down for a hit. Here comes Jouette around a score, or Rossi around a score. And now behind him, it is Seymour, and that is going to be a two-run base hit for Zach Pesson, who ends up at third base. A two RBI triple there. That's his second triple in the last five or six games. Lewis Rossi and Brad Seymour both come around in post 77. Now leads it four to three. I'll bring up Cole Glasper in the second baseman, but first we'll have a mound visit from the Sudbury head coach. Good piece of hitting by Zach Pesson, and he has just been on fire lately with the bat, Larry. He got that little bit of uh, information from Coach Johnson. Get back in the batter's box. Give yourself some extra time. Don't crowd the plate. Yeah. It's a doubles, a triple machine. It certainly is. Al Fortiani, the Sudbury coach, visiting with his pitcher. Four runs in for post 77 here in the bottom of the fourth. Cole Glassburn stepping in. Gets a piece of this one. Hit in the air. Foul territory. Is it catchable? It no. was. It was. He couldn't reel it in, though. Jack McKee and the catcher ran over. 0-1. Now if uh, Thomas Selly goes back out there, he'll have a nice one run lead to work with, or at least one run. See if Glassburn can make some contact here. And this is up the right side, slow roller, picked up by the first baseman, he steps on the bag for the out. Three unassisted, but post 77 plates four runs in the bottom of the fourth, and they lead it four to three as we head to the top of the fifth on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the fifth inning, post 77 with a four to three lead after a four run bottom of the fourth. Two, three, and four due up for Sudbury. Keith Schmelter, Jack McKeon, and Will Fletcher to face Matt Tomaselli out there for his fifth inning of work. What will the leash be with Tomaselli now that they have a one run lead? Nobody knows, but we will see. Line up and the pitch. Strike one. Smelter is one for two today. He's caught stealing and singled in the third. 0 oh and two. And this is up the left side, past the reach of the shortstop, a leadoff single. I'll bring up Jack McKee and the catcher. Selly set to deal. And this is hit in the air over to foul territory, and it is going to drop foul. Oh, and one on McKeon. Probably everybody's available to come in in relief, except for Ben Fink, who was a starter last night.
Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike, 0-2. And, and I imagine Luke Gustafson is not available since he pitched Monday night. I don't think they want to try to stay away from their premier starters, but got a lead right now. Guess we'll try to hold on to that. And that is going to drop into left field. That'll be trouble. And it is going to roll all the way to the wall as Smelter going to be waved around third. He will come in and score, and we are tied up at four. RBI double for Jack McKeon. That'll bring up Will Fletcher, the right fielder. Did you sell tickets to the Sudbury fans over this side? I did not. <laughs> That's certainly a good turnout for the uh, Sudbury fans, but it's the last game of the season. I'll come and support the team, see their kids play. Actually, had a pretty good uh, turnout in Sudbury for, for that game at the beginning of the season. As this is hit up the middle, glove that short throw to first, and it is no problem. Six to three on the out. McKeon stays at second. It's one on, one out. Another run in for Sudbury. It's four to four. Henry Stahl, the pitcher, to step in. And this is up the left side. That drops into left field. Lead runner going to be stopped at third. Good throw in by Kavanaugh. One out single for Stow. I'd say a good move by the coach too, stopping the lead runner at third. Why well, take the risk with one out? And Ken Sullivan, the center fielder, will step in. Well, Stow should have read that ball and he should be on second base now. The ball went all the way to the plate. Sean Jewett flashing some signs to his middle infielders as to whether he's going to throw through or whether he's going to eat the ball. Should the runner take off? He's two for two on steals. And this is going to be up the left side. Gloved by the shortstop. Horning throws from, <laughs> he was in a sit down position through to second for one and was able to get the out. What a play by Horning. You mean he was on his butt when he threw That's that? That's right. One? And McKeon comes around to score another run. Horning limping around a little bit out there. I don't know whether that's out of embarrassment or he hurt himself. I don't see why he'd be embarrassed. That was a heck of a play. So well, Sullivan reaches on the six to four force out, two away. But a run is in for Sudbury. It is now a 5-4 lead for Sudbury. This is Morris at the plate. Well, it looks like Coach Johnson might just leave Tomaselli out there the whole game. And this is going to be a three unassisted ground out. That'll wrap up the inning. And we will head to the Bottom of the fifth, Sudbury has retaken the lead. It's five to four on HCAM and WACA TV. <laughs> Bottom of the fifth inning, a five four Sudbury lead. As post 77, hoping for similar success as they had last inning. Ben Thomas starting things off. Henry Stahl remains out there for Sudbury. That's filed away. We do have some warm-up action for post-77. Dominic Kavanaugh, who went the distance in game number one for post-77. Line up in the pitch. Upstairs. One and one. I think if Coach Johnson smells blood in the water, he's going to bring in Dominic Kavanaugh. That'd be my guess. That one outside. Two and one. And a 
He'll get a piece of this one, and that's going to be dropped by the second baseman. Ben Thomas reaches on the error. Right through the haunted infield. Second error of the day for Sudbury. That'll bring up, looks like uh, Drew Rancatori is going to step in. He pinch ran for Ronan Bates, who got on his last time up. Yeah, he'll stay in the game. Last time he was up, he hit a 323-foot shot right down the right field line. That one's low, 1-0. One Two and zero count. Slight lead at first. He's taken off, and this is popped foul and out of play. Two and one. Good hustle on the third baseman. Ben Thomas was off, trying to swipe second base. Checking at first, runner back safe. He's coming awful close to balking. Looks like Ben Fink getting loose for post 77. Ah, he threw all of yesterday's game. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna get in there today as this is driven over to right field and caught. One on, one out. Jackson Horning, the shortstop to step in. He's due for a dinger. I don't think he's had a home run all this year here at home. Runner taking off from first, the throw up is off the mark. And Ben Thomas will be safe, he'll advance to third on the overthrow. Turns into two bases on a mistake there. Looks like he got tied up with the second baseman who's going over to cut out the, get the ball. Ball went in the center field and Ben Thomas turned around, saw where it was and got up and scampered to third base. So now it's runner on third with one out. Down low. Held his swing, but it's a strike. Two and two on Hornin. Hornin checking the count. He got the news from the umpire. And this is driven up the left side, foul. Ball had a little sizzle on it. Now it remains two and two on Horning. Hit into a double play and reached on an error so far. Wow, you can't fault them for hitting in the double play. Running bases. Way off the bag. 6 3 double play. And this is up the left side, picked up by the third baseman. Throw to first in time, but the run does score. So it's a sacrifice RBI ground out for Hornung. And we are tied up at five as Ben Thomas comes around. It'll bring up Tom Cavanaugh. Gets the job done there. There's a strike.
Cole Glassburn getting loose behind us. One and one on Dom Cavanaugh. Two and one. Three and one. Wonder if Style's starting to lose a little bit of steam out there. I'm going to have to ask him after this inning. And this is hit up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, and they got him. Four to three, four out number three, but we are tied up at five apiece as we head to the top of the sixth on HKM and WACA TV. Top of the sixth inning. All kinds of changes for post 77. Dom Cavanaugh moves over from left field to take over on the mound for Matt Thomaselli. And now moving over to left field, it's John Pesson. Ben Thomas moves over from right field to center field. Drew Rancatori, the new right fielder, and Ben Fink takes over for Cole Glassburn at second base. Matt Thomaselli went five innings in his first start of his post-77 career and pitched pretty well. Didn't do too bad of a job. He ended up giving up 12 hits and five runs. All the runs were earned. As Kavanaugh delivers, there's a strike. Bad, it's Kyle Hankey, the first baseman. Takes strike two. I think this is where Coach Johnson decides to give them the kill shot. Dominic's yeah. overpowering. I think what the hope was was that Thomas Selly would manage the game. They'd be in it. And then they bring Kavanaugh out to finish it off as that pitch bounced up from the dirt and hit the batter. On the bounce. Oh, he's going to be awarded first base. Jacob Noyes, the third baseman, will step in now. One on, no outs. Oh, umpire telling Dominic Cabin he's not ready. Maybe they thought Dominic Cavanaugh was going to quick pitch the hitter. Cavanaugh working from the stretch. Runner with a bit of a lead at first. Bunt pulled back, but it's strike one anyway. He was just showing that bunt, had no intention of bunting it. He delivers. Runner taking off from first is up the first base line. And it is picked up by the first baseman. They were able to get the runner. But Hankey is able to advance to second. I believe it was the first baseman who laid the tag on the runner. One on, one out. That'll bring up Ben Cateman, the second baseman. Tom Cavanaugh coming into... The week had pitched 11 innings and had a 2.54 ERA. It's pitched pretty well for post 77. A swing and a miss there by Cateman. Thought it was Bateman. A five to five tie game here between Sudbury and post 77. Gets a piece of this one over to right field, but right there to make the catch is Rankatori, two away. I'll bring up Keith Schmelter, the shortstop.
Cavanaugh set to deal. That one low, 1-0. One That's the middle infielders are not holding the runner on at second base. That one gets by, and now the runner is going to head over to third. Wild pitch allows Hanky to advance. One on, two outs. Two-o count. There's a strike. Two and one. Fouled away. Cavanaugh able to battle back. Upstairs, full count. Swing and a miss, and he gets out of it. That'll retire the side. In the top of the six, it is a five to five ball game as we head to the bottom of the six on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the sixth inning, due up for post 77 is five, six, and seven. Lewis Rossi, Sean Jewett, Brad Seymour to step in. They face Henry Stahl. It's a five to five ball game. That pitch is low, one and oh. Sort of two games within a game here. They got a game of hacky sack going on behind the Ashland dugout. And then the game in front of us. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike, one and one. Set to deliver, bun pulled back, two and one. Lewis hasn't bunted as much as he did last year. He's squaring the ball up nicely though. That's a ball. Lou Rossi always involved in something, creating some mayhem. And there's a walk. Rossi free pass to first base. That'll bring up Sean Jew with the catcher. Normally Rossi hits two in the order. He's pushed down today for Bates, who was the DH hitting second. Swing and a miss. Jewel went golfing on that pitch. Bunt pulled back, one and one. Well, you wonder if uh, Sudbury has anyone available if Stahl starts to struggle. Well, I'll volunteer. <laughs> I'll give it up. Pulled back. Two and one. Runner on, no outs. Post 77 can get at least a run. It'll bring Sudbury down to their final three outs for the top of the seventh. Pulled back. There's a strike. Two and two. Well, Sean's got to swing away here. Gets a piece of this, foul out of play. Come on, come on. 
And this is up the middle, past the dive of the shortstop. Rossi will stop at second. It's two on, no outs for post 77. Good piece of hitting there by Jewett. Perfect placement. Couldn't have drawn it up any better. Now will they put the bunt on with Pesson up and try to get the runners over to second and third? John Pesson stepping in. This will be his first at bat of the game. Stepping in for Brad Seymour. And he hits this in the air, foul up the right side, and it's out of play. Well, there's no signs of a sacrifice there. Lewis Rossi is in scoring position with a base hit. First baseman going to play behind Sean Jewett. Wind up and the pitch down low. Called strike anyway. Takes a look at second and deals. And this is up the left side. That is going to be foul. Just foul. Infield umpire Mike Whalen making that call. Well known around the Hopkinton area. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I didn't realize that. Zach Pesson's waiting on deck behind his brother. Gets a piece of this foul out of play. He's going to hit in the soccer field. Louis Rossi just sneaking. He'll chop this over to right field. It's caught. One away. No advancement by the runners. Zach Pesson will now step in. He tripled the last time he was up. Hit a bomb to center field. There's a strike. Zach Pesson, a two RBI triple in the fourth. It's part of a four run inning for post 77. That one down low. Still wanted that pitch. Look good from here. Style from the stretch. Inside. He's in danger of loading the bases with Ben Fink right behind him. 2-1. And that, did that hit him? It did. Must have hit him. And now we're gonna have Ben Fink step in. He came in the game to take over at second base for Cole Glassburn. Got him on the elbow, the umpire says. The Sudbury coach doesn't agree. I'm sure the home plate umpire had a better view than anybody. Well, he's going to consult with the base umpire, see if he made an attempt to get out of the way, which has been a problem for post-77 last couple of games. Home plate umpire says, yeah, it was hit. Go back to your dugout. <laughs> Please. Please. Well, Subbury's going to bring in the infield. Bases loaded, one out. Pitch to Fink. 
Swing and a miss. Yeah, a little tip, 0-1. Mm. Didn't look like a particularly good swing. Fink hasn't really had any opportunities to hit. See what he's got. Strike two. Ben Thomas is due up next. He's the man with a plan, should Fink not get on base. Like if Fink gets a hit, the bench will erupt. Outside, one and two. He's lucky to still be standing at home plate. See what happens with that reprieve. That is a fair ball. Picked up by the pitcher to flip to home, and they got him. Oh. So Fink reaches on the one to two force out. Hit that about 20 feet. The blast. So it's bases loaded, still two outs, however. Ben Thomas steps in. This is the opportunity here to break the tie. And get some more. Everybody will be off with the crack of the bat. Base hit puts Sudbury down to their final three outs. Fink is going to get a bigger lead over there. That's fouled away. 0-1, big swing there by Thomas. Now Coach Obit is imploring uh, Ben Fink to get a bigger lead. Swing and a miss, so and two. Ben Thomas has been clutch all year. Bases a juice full of 77s. He's 0 for two today, reached on an error and walked. Upstairs, one and two. All from the stretch. Bases loaded, two outs. Fouled away. Fought that one off. Drew Rancatori on the shag. Coach Johnson unwrapping a couple of new eggs for the umpire. You can see the ball better. Outside, two and two. I thought I saw the umpire's hand start to go up. It was close. Gets a piece of this one, drives it over to center field, and that is going to take a hop over the wall, a ground rule double for Ben Thomas, and two runs will score. Doesn't get any better than that. That was about a 380 foot shot. A two RBI double, and that was close to home run land. Oh yeah. Sean Jewett will score, Zach Pesson will score. That hit by pitch looms large. I'm sure the Sudbury coach is probably still griping about that. Ben Fink over to third, and it is a Seven to five ball game. We're gonna have a new pitcher for Sudbury. Will Fletcher, game one starter. All right. Well, two outs in the inning. Sudbury gonna try to get one last out, and while they get the new pitcher ready, we'll take a timeout. You're tuned into Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV and HCAM. Continuing on with the bottom of the six, the new pitcher for. Sudbury, Will Fletcher moves over from right field to take over for Henry Stahl. Stahl went five and two thirds of an inning, giving up eight hits, seven runs, five of which were earned. Swing and a miss by Rancatori, 0 and one. Runners on second and third, four post 77. A ground rule double by Ben Thomas. To put post 77 on top, seven to five. And now Sudbury will be down to their final three outs in the top of the seventh. Tom 
Kavanaugh will likely remain in the game to close it out. And actually, Kavanaugh would be in line for the win. As this is driven into center field, past the reach of the shortstop. Ben Fink comes around to score. Behind him is Ben Thomas. Two more runs come around for post 77. A two RBI single for Drew Rancatori. And it is a nine to five lead. And that is certainly some great insurance for post 77 as Jackson Horning, the shortstop, will step in. Will Fletcher set to deliver, fouled away. Well, now things Looking very good for post 77, and it's looking like they'll end the regular season with 14 wins and four losses. They've already secured the number two spot as this pitch gets by. And advancing to second is Bates, or excuse me, uh, Rankatori. So post 77 has secured second. They'll actually have more wins right now than Lowell, but Lowell still has three more games left to play. But if somehow Lowell's not able to win for the rest of the season, or if they only win one game, post 77 could have first place. As this is driven into left field, that'll get down for a hit. Lead runner being waved around. Here comes Rankatori. Another run's going to come in, and that is going to be an RBI double for Jackson Horning. And he will advance to third on a misfire. An Aaron throw allows him to advance to third. So now things getting a little bit ugly for Sudbury. It is a 10 to five game. Five more runs here in the bottom of the six for post 77. And Ashland has batted around in this inning. As Dom Cavanaugh steps in. That one down low, one and oh. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the broadcast. Connor Donovan, our cameraman for Ashland Legion Baseball. As that's fouled down the first base side, and coach over there had to take a nice little dive, Andrew Keim. Wind up and the pitch. Here's a strike. One and two. Set to deliver. And that's going to get by. Horning's going to come around to score. Sixth run of the inning for post 77. And just like that, it is 11 to 5. Cavanaugh will step back in. Bases are now cleared for post 77. Gets a piece of this one over to right center, and that's going to drop in front of the wall. Cavanaugh heading around first, now heading over to second. Having a little bit of trouble in the outfield as he heads over to third. It is a stand-up triple for Dom Cavanaugh. And now that'll bring up Lewis Rossi. The rally continues for post 77. Coach Johnson giving Dominic Cavanaugh a little bit of a hard time. He said if he stopped eating Cheetos, he might have been able to make it home. Fouled away, 0 and 1. A six run inning for post 77, an 11 5 lead. Things have gotten a bit rough for Sudbury in this one. Swing and a miss, so and two. Was this game tied up at the top of the inning, bottom of the inning? It was. Well, they better start swinging and missing because they don't want to have any light issues and revert back to a tie. No, we have an official game, so. Okay. One and two count. 
fouled away. Two outs in the inning. Dom Cavanaugh on third after legging out a triple. Just outside, two and two. Gets a piece of this one. That'll drop into left field. Cavanaugh comes around to score. Louis Rossi just dumped that one in the left field. RBI single, seventh run of the inning for post 77. Sean Jew with the catcher to step in. That wasn't a blast by any stretch of the imagination. Fletcher's going to give the ball back to his coach. And we'll have another pitcher. Fletcher's going to go to left field. Now they're going to have a powwow out there. Well, with the pitching change, we'll take another timeout on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland. Sean Jewett stepping into the batter's box. Line Game is turning pitch. into a laugher. Outside, certainly is. Seven runs in, four post 77. Ashland will take it. Dominating as usual. Louis Rossi won't do anything crazy on the base pads. Shin out of music. respect. Strike two and one. Inside. The umpire wanted to go home. He sure, certainly isn't showing it now. Up the middle, slow roller picked up by the second baseman, flipped to second, and they get the out. A four to six out, and that's it for the bottom of the six. But not before post 77 played seven runs, and they lead it 12 to five as we head to the top of the seventh on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the seventh, all kinds of interesting position changes for post 77. Lewis Rossi is the new pitcher. Will make his first appearance on the mound this season for post 77. My favorite player. That's right. Way. Now you get to see him pitch. Oh. Luke Gustafson moves over to third base. And Ben Fink is the new catcher. Sean Jewett is done for the day. And then over at first base. Owen Ward. Owen Ward and. Dom Cavanaugh at second. There you go. And those are yeah, the they, changes. They pretty much <laughs> emptied the bench. As Jack McKee and the catcher will step in. So we'll get to see what Lewis Rossi has to offer on the mound. Dom Cavanaugh came in and pitched a successful inning. Lou Rossi doesn't look like an imposing figure out there on the mound. It's my opinion. Oh. A pitch up high. He's find, trying to find his release point. His teammates were giving him the business while he was warming up. This could be an interesting seven. Two and zero. Oh. Now, if he blows this lead, then oh, oh my goodness! Well, the sun will come down before that. <laughs> Three and zero. Oh. Um. And a four-pitch walk. That'll well, br bring up Will Fletcher. What is, what is his whip? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> oh, now he's, now he's set, and then he's giving the runner a look. There's a strike. <laughs> ben Fink overthrew uh, Louis Rossi there, but 
got to remember, a game's still on. If that ball went in the center field, the runner could take off and grab second. But it's a little off-speed pitch by Lou Rossi. One and one. Um, his teammates are just saying to Lou, just throw it. Two and one. Might be here a while. I, I think we can apologize to the fans now for this. Checking at first, runner back safe. Lewis Rossi's a very good third baseman, but I don't know about him. his uh, stuff on the mound so far. Swing and a miss, full count. If he records a strikeout, his teammates will absolutely go nuts. <laughs> and he's thinking about strikeout right now. We'll have, to, we'll have to have Connor to make sure he films the dugout if he gets the strikeout. And that's ball four. Two straight walks, no outs. Henry Stahl, the pitcher, will step in. Lucas Gustafson covering third base, looking like he knows what he's doing as a left-handed third baseman. Probably hasn't played third base since Little League. There's a strike. And a throw from the catcher goes over to second base. Ben Fink is the catcher. He was a pitcher last night, so... He threw a, threw a lot of pitches. He's still got Horning at short. Swing and a miss, so and two. Oh, Dr. Funkenstein on the mound. Was that the knuckleball? Yeah, that was the Bugs Bunny curveball or something. One and two. Ben Fink dropped that ball, it was right at him. We'll just say he popped, it popped out of his glove. And this is hit in the air over to left field and caught. Jackson Horning making the catch, one away. That'll bring up Ken Sullivan, the center fielder. One out, two on. That's got to be satisfying for Lewis Rossi recording his first out of his career. Yeah, it's a pretty good ERA so far. Well, his whip is still high. That one low, 1-0. One oh. He really doesn't know what he's doing out there. He's just throwing it. Working from the stretch. There's a strike, 1-1. One and one. <laughs> I think you would call this pitching by Braille. Lucas Gustafson is not even holding the runner. Strike two, nice breaking pitch. If the runner on second just wanted to walk down to third, he would have it. <laughs> I think my mom, she's 85, she'd have that base. Two and two. Look at how deep he is at third base. There is strike three, two away. <laughs> Lewis Rossi has recorded a strikeout. Is he smiling out there? Charlie Desmars will step in. It's his first strikeout of the season As from the pitcher's mound. Right. Well, whoever that last strikeout victim was, he was victimized by Big Lou Rossi. That one inside, 1-0. Now we start to throw some gas. It's getting a little overconfident now. Hey, you know, he's <laughs> getting the hang of it. Every battery's getting a little better. Except, except on that pitch. 2-0. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two There's a strike, 2-1. 
He might be my player of the game. Maybe we'll get an interview with Lou Rossi. Yeah, he went three for three at the plate. Swing and a miss. <laughs> the fans are imploring Lou to pour it down the plate. And there it is. Two strikeouts for Lewis Rossi. He can hit, he can play third base, and now we discover he can pitch. He could do it all. Lewis Rossi, the player of the game, <laughs> as he went three for three at the plate with a walk, a run scored, and two RBIs. And he also pitched an inning of shutout baseball to allow Ashland Post 77 to take down Sudbury by a final score of 12 to five. Ashland finishes regular season play with 14 wins and four losses. And Sudbury falls to three and 14 with this loss here today. Matt Tomaselli was a starter for Ashland. He kept them in the ball game. Then Dom Cavanaugh came in, pitched an inning. Dom Cavanaugh gets the win for Ashland on the mound as Post 77 put up seven runs in the bottom of the sixth. Ashland, post 77, takes down Sudbury in their final regular season game by a final score of 12 to five. Post 77 finishes the regular season, 14 wins and four losses. And the next step, it's playoff time for post 77. Ashland scores 12 runs, 12 hits, commits no errors. Sudbury, five runs on 12 hits, committing three errors. The final score for the final time, Ashland takes down Sudbury with the help of a seven run bottom of the six by a final score of 12 to five. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk to you again soon, folks.